you've been into retro gaming for a while, then I'm sure you've heard of FPGAs or Field Programmable Gate Arrays and all the amazing things that they're capable of. These are special integrated circuits that can be programmed to very accurately recreate existing hardware logic using hardware description language, or HDL. Which brings me to the Mister, an open source project that allows us to play an array of retro consoles and I'm finally going to be building one of my very own. Let's take a look. Hey everyone, how's it going? My name is Tito and welcome to another episode of Retro Renew. Today, I'm finally gonna make my very own Mr. FPGA console. The focus of this video is gonna be primarily on the building aspect. I wanted to make something that is both easy and unique. When shopping around for the parts that I would need for this project, I really couldn't find any cases for the Mr. that really interested me. Most of the cases that I liked were primarily one-off creations made by enthusiasts, which I couldn't purchase myself. So I decided to build a custom case of my own. And in doing so, I had four primary goals. First, I wanted the build process to be easy. I wanted to be able to pretty much build this with just the tools that I have, and I really didn't want a complicated design. Second, I wanted the parts for the case to be relatively cheap, nothing too fancy. Third, I want it to of course look cool. Now, granted, this is completely relative, and what I think looks cool, you may not. I'm a fan of old hi-fi equipment, especially from the late 70s through the 80s. A lot of that equipment used wood grain and aluminum materials, which I think looks great. So that's the theme that I went with. And my last goal is I don't want a whole mess of wires. I want this to be a somewhat clean looking build. So let's see if I can pull it off. All right, so in this video, I'm gonna start off by showing you all the parts that I'll be using for this build. And there are a lot. Then I'll demonstrate how to put it all together, discuss some of the key features of the Mister, go over the pros and cons of my particular build, and of course, provide you with my overall thoughts. Now, I have a lot of parts for this project. First, I'll go over all the electronic components that I'll need. Then I'll go over the materials I bought for the case. Starting with the most important part of this entire project, I have here the Terrasic DE10 Nano. In this box, you get the board with the FPGA, which is the brains of the entire project, and you get this power adapter. This here is the heatsink for the FPGA chip. It will help keep things nice and cool. Next, we have the Mr. IO board. This adds quite a bit of functionality to the build, such as analog video out via the VGA connector. This is a must if you plan on using this on a CRT. This is the USB hub, which is also vitally important as it'll allow you to add many peripherals to your build, such as a Wi-Fi and Bluetooth dongle. To secure the PCB to the case, I bought some extra brass standoffs. These come with a large assortment, so I should be covered for my needs. Here we have the RAM module. This is important as all your saved cores will be loaded here. If you want the most flexibility and compatibility with different cores, you'll want to opt for the largest one, which is this 128 megabyte module. This Wi-Fi adapter is totally optional since there is an ethernet port on the FPGA board, but it does make things more convenient. You can FTP games to the Mister and update the cores wirelessly. The Bluetooth dongle is in my opinion, an absolute necessity. Being able to use any Bluetooth enabled wireless controller adds quite a bit of flexibility to the Mister, and nowadays no one wants to be tethered to their console. Of course, you'll need an SD card. This will hold the Mister OS, cores, and your games. I opted to get a 64 gigabyte card since the majority of the games I'll be playing are 16 bit and don't require too much space. This here is a splitter for the included power adapter. It also incorporates a switch so you can turn the Mister on and off without having to unplug it from the wall. This USB micro adapter is specially designed to connect the USB hub to the FPGA board, which we'll actually be modifying for my particular case design. Speaking of which, onto the parts for the case. The first thing we have is this wooden plank that I bought from an Etsy seller. 
it's 9 by 6 inches and 1 inch thick. It already came stained and treated to have this really nice dark finish. Here is a plexiglass sheet that is also 9 by 6 and will serve as the top. It will add a small layer of protection to the console. These are some large standoffs for the plexiglass. These will suspend the plexiglass on top of the wood plank and the electronic components. The aluminum finish will also add to the retro hi-fi look. These are some AV isolation feet, again to really give the mister that retro hi-fi look. And also so that the console isn't just resting on the wooden plank. Because both the AV isolation feet and the large standoffs didn't come with mounting screws, I'll be using these. I just had these spare screws lying around, but I do think they'll be perfect for this project. And lastly, I bought this awesome Mr. FPGA badge to really finish things off and give it somewhat of a polished look. Wow, that is a laundry list of things. But don't worry, I'll have everything I just went over listed in the video description below if you're interested. Anyway, now that we've seen all the parts I'll be using for this Mr. Build, let's start putting this thing together. So the first thing we need to do is prep the DE10 Nano board. To do that, we need to remove the four Phillips screws securing the plexiglass top. Then unscrew all the brass standoffs. Great, now let's move our attention to the wooden base. I'm going to mock up how I want everything organized on the plank. I'll arrange the FPGA board, USB hub, and large standoffs and get them to their approximate location. I kept the two boards far away enough so I can insert the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth dongles in this center area out of the way. Now with a pencil, mark all the areas that will need to be drilled for various screws and standoffs. There will be four standoffs per PCB, which I'm marking here. And then I'll mark the points for the screws I'll need for the large standoffs. I marked one of the standoffs and measured the distance to the edges. That way I can replicate their location for all the other standoffs and make them all uniform. I then used a permanent marker to make all the points I need to drill more visible as the pencil markings were a bit difficult to see. Once everything is marked, I'll be using my small drill press to drill holes for the large standoffs at each of the four corners. I then used my power drill to drill the remaining holes for the smaller brass standoffs which will hold the PCBs. The blue painter's tape is there to ensure I don't drill down too far. Now the last set of holes I need to drill are for the AV isolation feet on the bottom. After I make my measurements, I can drill the necessary holes. Great, now we can fasten the isolation feet to the bottom of the plank. Once those are all attached, let's screw in the large standoff posts at each of the four corners on top. Once those are installed, let's fasten the eight brass standoffs to the plank. Fantastic. We're now ready to install all the electronics. First, let's start with the USB hub. Place it on top of the brass standoffs and then secure it with four Phillips screws. Then on the other side, place the DE10 Nano onto the standoffs and secure it with four 15mm M3 brass standoffs. Great. Next, peel the release paper for the thermal pad on the heatsink and place it directly onto the FPGA chip as shown. Now it's time to install the I.O. board. Make sure it is oriented correctly with the VGA port on the same side as the HDMI port of the FPGA board. Be sure to align the I.O. pins on both sides of the board. And then firmly press down to set it in place. Lastly, secure the I.O. board using four Phillips screws. Next, let's install the RAM chip. 
be sure it's oriented correctly by following the silk screen instructions indicating which side should be facing out. Now go ahead and install both the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth dongle. I installed them in these inward facing USB ports since I won't be removing them and it will keep all of the more accessible ports free for other peripherals. Now grab the small USB hub interface and pull off the two IO pin covers as shown. Next we need to desolder all the connector pins from the small PCB. Just applying some heat with your soldering iron while pulling them out with some tweezers ought to do the trick. Once they're all out, remove all the residual solder from the through holes so we can solder in some wires. Solder a wire to each of the through holes where the connectors used to be. And this is what it should look like. I used some heat shrink tubing and a mesh loom to make it look more professional. I then soldered the other ends of the wires to the connector pins. Go ahead and insert the connector to the appropriate pins on the USB hub PCB, again making sure they are oriented correctly. Now the last thing we need to do is install the plexiglass top. First make the appropriate marks for the holes that need to be drilled. Then drill the holes using a step bit. This is important because using a normal drill bit may cause the plexiglass to crack. After all the holes have been drilled, peel off the protective film on both sides. Place the included plastic washers onto the standoffs, and then the plexiglass itself, followed again by the last of the included plastic washers. Then button it all up by fastening the screws. And lastly, install the sweet Mr. FPGA badge onto the wooden plank to bring it all together. Fantastic. I was a bit nervous when putting this together, unsure if it would come out how I imagined. Thankfully, this is almost exactly how I envisioned the finished product would look. I think I did capture some of the old school hi-fi look and I really think this will look great in my retro gaming setup. Now I went ahead and flashed the OS onto my SD card with the Mr. Software off camera. There are great tutorials on YouTube that demonstrate how to do this. Since this video is primarily focused on the build itself, I decided to not include it. But if you would like to see a tutorial from me on how to set up the software side of the Mr., let me know in the comments and I'll perhaps make one if enough people are interested. Now, taking a look at the features, I'll briefly go over some of the highlights that stood out to me since this video is, again, primarily about building the case. If you want to learn more about the Mr. Project, I highly suggest you take a look at the YouTube channel Smoke Monster, who does a lot of great coverage on the Mr. Project. Now, getting into the Mr. OS, this thing does more than just video game consoles. It also supports cores for classic computer systems such as the Apple One, and Commodore 64, amongst many others. Now, something that I haven't gotten yet into is the arcade support. Mr. supports so many different arcade hardware. This is something that I really want to explore a lot more in the future. And of course, it supports retro consoles. This is where I'll be spending most of my time. Now, something that is really cool is that once you select a console, such as the Sega Genesis, for example, you are greeted with a secondary menu. Here you can make adjustments to audio and video, but more interestingly, you can also select different regions which will load the appropriate BIOS so you can play import titles. That's pretty cool. Now, one of the big features the Mr. has is support for analog video through the VGA connector. I haven't experimented with this yet, but I do plan to try in my CRT setup. I'm actually in the process of getting some VGA to RGB cables so I can hook it up to my PVM. If anyone has any recommendations on some good cables for this job, leave me a comment below on where I can pick one up. Great, so now that you have an idea of some of the features of the Mr., let's go over the pros and cons. Starting with the pros, first and foremost, I love how the case came out. I think for the most part I achieved that old school hi-fi look which should fit right into my retro setup. I also really love how flexible the Mr. platform is. I can output video through HDMI and analog via the VGA connector. It just gives you a lot of options. Also, the flexibility of being able to use almost any wireless controller is great. Conceivably, I could use some of my 8-bit controllers for a more authentic feel based on the console I'm playing. 
pretty neat stuff. Overall, this is going to be my go-to console for playing quick pickup games, and I think it will primarily reside in my modern setup since I can hook it up to my HDTV. Speaking of which, the video output quality is incredible. I haven't messed with the settings too much, but it does appear to have some customizable options. As is though, the output is immaculate. Here are some examples of video quality for a few of my favorite titles. Okay, now let's go over the cons. So while I did get the mister up and running, I am considering this project a work in progress. There are a couple things that I would like to improve. First, I would like to somehow integrate a power switch into the design. Right now I have the power splitter, which also has the switch built in. While this works just fine, I think it sort of takes away from the overall design aesthetic. Ideally, I would like to have a single cable plug into the mister to power everything, and a dedicated power switch attached to the console to power it on and off. If anyone has any suggestions on how to accomplish this, please let me know in the comments below. And the last con is that these buttons on the IO board are a bit awkward to access. I think I can somehow either extend the buttons or cut out the plexiglass so that it doesn't cover that area of the board. Overall though, I am extremely happy with this build and I am loving the mister. This project has a ton of potential, and I cannot wait to see what the future holds. So there you have it, my retro, hi-fi inspired Mr. FPGA build. As always, I'm curious of what you all think. What is your favorite case or enclosure for the Mr.? Definitely let me know by leaving a comment down below. Also, if you have a cool Mr. build, share it with us in the Macho Nacho Discord server. I look forward to checking it out. I hope you did enjoy this video. If you did, please give it a like and consider subscribing to the channel. You can find me on Facebook and Instagram at Macho Nacho Productions. I release content every Thursday, so be sure to turn on notifications. And as always, see you next time.